So the undercard for the Alexander Usyk Tyson Fury fight has been officially announced and that should make people feel a little bit more confident that this show and certainly the main event is going to go ahead because we do have the undercard now. Obviously it's Tyson Fury so you never know until he's in the ring but yeah people will be a little more confident of the fight going ahead and the show going ahead with the undercard being announced. So let's start from the bottom and go all the way to the top. You got Aji Caballero versus Frank Sanchez. That's a good fight. It doesn't yet say how many rounds it is. It could be a 12-rounder, possibly a 10-rounder. And surely that's got to be some type of eliminator. I think it is. I may have done a video about it. I think that might be the WBC eliminator between Caballel and Sanchez. That's a good one. You've got Moses Itauma stepping up against a Kazakh, a German-based Kazakh, who is 24-3. He's lost two of his uh, two of his three losses have come by knockout or stoppage. Excuse me. He's 28 years of age, so a young guy. If we have a look at his record here, uh, 20 KOs, so maybe he's got some power there. Lost a split decision last year against the guy that was four and two, so that's not a good sign, is it? What else have we got in here? He lost to Tom Schwartz, and that's definitely not a good sign. He got stopped by Tom Schwartz in the sixth round. Well, there's a no contest, no decision there. He was also stopped. Oh, he fought Tom Schwartz twice. So he was stopped by Tom Schwartz in 2015. And then he was top, stopped by Tom Schwartz again in 2019. So yeah, despite the record here, and perhaps this guy can punch a bit, this should be food for Moses Atalma. He should be able to go through this guy with relative ease, given the fact he's been stopped by Tom Schwartz twice. And this fight is an eight-rounder. I would not expect it to go the distance unless this individual goes into the type of survival mode where he's basically not throwing any punches and he's very good at covering up. Maybe he can last the distance if he does that. But no, I think Atalma's going to take him out. Then we've got David Nyika. Not sure who that is. Well, I haven't seen this guy before, but he is six foot six inches tall from Australia. But he's only a cruiserweight, so a very, very tall cruiserweight we got here. Never seen this guy before. He's taking on uh, a 12 and 0 fighter from Germany. That's interesting. Not familiar with either of these two. Isaac Lowe, of course, who's Tyson Fury's mate. Uh, he's on there. I thought he'd retired after the last time he got bashed up. But apparently he's back. And he's fighting a guy called, not Hasbulla, but Hazibulla. <laughs> Hazibullah. Shout out to the, you know, little man Hazibullah. Legendary character. In fact, where's this guy from? Is he Emirati? Okay, he's he resides in the Emirates, but he's actually from Afghanistan. Okay. Don't get many Afghan boxers. So who else is on here? Sergey Kovalev, that's an interesting one. He's on this card against the guy called Robin Safar. A Las Vegas-based Swede. All right, the guy's 16-0. and 0. He's fought his whole career at Cruiserweight, 31 years of age. You know, Kovalev was a really entertaining fighter to watch back in the days. You know, when he was in his crusher era in the run-up to the Andre Ward fight, really, really entertaining fighter back then. And at Cruiserweight, I know he's had a few wins. I think he beat Kubrat Polo's brother, didn't he, at Cruiserweight. So let's see what Sergey Kovalev's got left at... Uh, his ripe old age, what is he now? Doesn't actually give his age on here, but he must be at least 36, 37, maybe older than that. So who else we got here? Mark Chamberlain versus Joshua Wahab. Not familiar with this guy. 23 and 1, 16 knockouts. Okay, his loss was a majority to Liam Dillon at your call a couple of years ago. Got Joe Cordina versus a guy whose surname I won't try and pronounce, is it? Well, let me try and pronounce it. <laughs> uh, Anthony Cassese. That's my best attempt. Not sure who he is, but Joe Cordina's fighting this guy, and it will be a world title fight. Okay. This guy's 35 years of age from Ireland. Yeah, not familiar with him. Then, of course, you've got Jay Opatai versus Myris Breedis. That is a really, really good fight. The first fight was very entertaining. And obviously, Jay Opatai suffered a broken jaw. 
Maris Breedis had to come back from a difficult start and he really put J.L. Pattaya under pressure in the back end of the fight. So yeah, that rematch should be really, really interesting. Maris Breedis, of course, has been very inactive. Uh, he is getting on now. He must be pushing 40 at this stage, maybe 37, 38. J.L. Pattaya, a much younger guy. Neither guy has been massively active. Well, actually, tell a lie. J.L. Pattaya fought twice last year. Maris Breedis, I think, didn't fight. Did he fight at all last year? Or is it just the... Yeah, he didn't fight at all last year. He fought off Pattaya in 2022. So, yeah, it favors off Pattaya when it comes to activity. And obviously, he's beaten Maris Breedis before. But still, you never know when uh, Maris Breedis is going to be completely spent. Perhaps he's got one good performance left in him. We shall see. Now, overall, I'd have to say this undercard isn't amazing. There's a lot of fights on there, but it isn't as strong as some of the other cards that we've been seeing recently in Saudi Arabia, uh, where they've really stacked it from top to bottom with quality fights all the way through. This one is more like a regular card. It's not a bad card by any means. And at the end of the day, the most important thing is the main event. But yeah, it's not quite as stacked as some of the other Saudi cards. A lot of these fights are really like prospects just getting their feet wet in uh, gimme fights like, you know, a Talma's fight, obviously. Uh, on paper, some of these fights look really good. But, you know, you wonder how good the opposition is in reality. Because again, they look evenly matched, a lot of them. But some of these guys are not chairman of the Who Needs Him Club, but the chairman of the Who is he club. <laughs> so let's see. Uh, certainly not the names, not as many names on the undercard as you have with some of the other Saudi shows, but still some good fights. Definitely Caballel versus Sanchez is a good fight. Always interesting to see the development of Moses Atalma. Kovalev, you know, we'll see what he's still got. And definitely Opatia Breeder. So yeah, let me know what you guys think about this card in the comment section below. Does this give you some confidence that the main event Usyk Fury will actually go ahead. Let me know what you think. Are you sick and tired of the mainstream mindset? Does the dogmatic conformity and pathological ignorance have you tearing your hair out in frustration? Then don't be alone. Come and join our brotherhood on Patreon. We stand as a beacon of reason against an army of insanity. You'll gain access to my weekly topical podcast where we take more deep dives than Jacques Cousteau on an endless variety of subjects. There's also videos, interviews, live Q&As, as well as a vast back catalog of previous episodes, including my popular Confessions of a Nightclub Bouncer series. You can listen via the Patreon app or download in high quality MP3. Connect with myself and hundreds of other members in our Element chat group. There's no contract, no commitment, you can cancel at any time, and it's cheaper than a Mickey D's McMuffin. Just head to my Patreon page via the link below this video and select the tier called the Brotherhood of Reason. I'll see you over there.